Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Nick for PBE Productions and today we got ourselves a quick little Photoshop tutorial on bringing a little bit of life to your boring flat uh, primitives. I mean look, we go from this, this flat square to, to this beautiful sphere and um, this is actually uh, inspired from a logo for a website that I was always on at school and I saw their logo and I thought, wow, that's, that's actually pretty nice. Let me try to make this because class is boring as hell. I can say hell, right? Please don't sue. Alright, so anyways, let's just jump into this. Go ahead and make a new comp. You know, 1000 by 1000 is just my default right now for some editing. Unlock the background layer. Not like we're doing much to it. But uh, go ahead and create a new layer by going down here. Uh, now this tutorial is good for beginners as it it's a pretty decent overview of uh, you know what Photoshop can do um, but it's also just kind of nice as like a refresher to make sure you know people who are doing more advanced things still know how to do the basics it's kind of sad if you've you know I can be like hey you want to make me a website I'm like yeah I'm like hey you want to make me a sphere and you're like oh crap <laughs> I don't know how to make a sphere uh, that's just a little sad a little sad anyways so we're going to start off by going here and making a circle. And you can do this by holding uh, shift and alt and just dragging out. You know, the size itself doesn't matter. And we're going to go ahead and pick a color. I did red last time. I'm sure it'll look just as good in blue. And go ahead and fill. Uh, you fill with the backgrounds by hitting control delete and X to swap the foreground and the background colors. Uh, just kind of speeds up workflow, you know, just a hair. So go ahead and zoom in. You just do the zoom in with Control One, and I'm, I always make a duplicate because I'm one to to mess things up. And we're gonna go ahead and come over here to right under the Blur tool, or the Sharpen or Smudge tool, depending on what you have open. And we're gonna get the Burn tool. And mine, if you want to use my exact settings, is 800 pixel size with a hardness <laughs> of zero percent. I recommend that you. You know, you play with some of these values again, you know. Uh, this is just a concept, and it can be applied to many different projects. So we're just going to kind of, kind of, you know, click lightly multiple times and follow the curve of the sphere. You just kind of want to add darkness. You're just wanting to uh, remove some of that flatness. And then we're going to come over here to the Dodge tool. And I have 500 uh, pixel width and zero hardness again. And just do the same for the top. Be careful with this one, because with the, this particular tool, um, if you do this too much, it's going to start looking really, really bright. And if you do it enough, it'll go complete white, and it will look not very nice. Uh, now, this next part is just personal preference. Uh, I feel like I have greater control when I do this. So I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to control click on the circle, and I'm going to take fairly large brush and just use the color black you know kind of do a swipe like that and then just kind of bring the opacity down on it I wasn't very happy with that swipe though let's kind of go back now there that's a swipe that's a swipe my friends and 70 ish maybe a little less it looks good. 70 looks good on the red, but it was a little too harsh for this. 62. That looks good. It just gives it a little bit more of a darkness. I mean, because if you're, you can see the difference between, you know, the non-dodged and the dodge. It just gives it a little bit more uh, depth, and it makes you feel like it's a little bit rounder, if that makes any sense. All right, we're going to create another new layer, and we're going to switch this to white. And we're actually going to uh, fake a specular mark. And now a specular mark in the 3D world is where, you know, an object would bounce off light and you would see like a small reflection is not the right word, but you, you can see the light source type thing. So we're just going to pretend we have a, a nice light round light source and about that size and one click. All right. And now, obviously, this is really flat, so we're going to give it some depth. So make sure your transform controls are visible. You can just toggle them on and off, and I believe Control-T. Yep, Control-T will also toggle them. 
and we're going to do whole control and we can now manipulate this a little bit more so what we're going to attempt to do is manipulate these boxes to what the angle of a circle would look like so something like this and of course you can play with that and then you're going to hit enter and let's bring these transform back and then place it you know wherever your heart desires obviously it's not going to make sense if it's over here um right here is about good and bring the opacity down It actually doesn't look too bad on full opacity, but we'll drop it to 90. And we'll hit enter to lock in the transformation. All right. All right. So we're getting pretty close to done. All we need to do now is add that shadow. So it looks like this is actually on, you know, some sort of floor. And uh, the way I like to do this is take the elliptical marquee tool. Let's go back to black and draw it. A shadow and fill that with the black I forgot to make a new layer <laughs> that's kind of important to do all right and I don't know why the transform controls are going away kind of line this up bring this behind the sphere and that is way too harsh of a shadow so we're gonna go to filters blur Gaussian blur Gaussian blur and 15.8 is about right and then we can kind of tweak this a little bit so it looks more like the sphere is casting a shadow and not just a shadow was placed there. And actually, I th what I think I'm going to do, I'm gonna make another new layer really quick. And I'm just going to darken up this bottom edge just a hair. So it maybe a little too dark, but just give a little bit more blackness down in that area. I'm going to make an 85. Yeah, there we go. Now, if you really wanted to add something to the background, you know, we can double click on it and uh, <laughs> no, no, not that. Yeah, maybe we can do a, a, a reversed. Wow, I have too many gradients. <laughs> um, this is going from white to a light gray. A gray color and hit OK. And you can play with the scale. You know, it just makes it look like it's more of in a studio type thing. And this overall looks pretty damn nice, if I do say so myself. And uh, I do recommend, you know, taking some of these tips into consideration. You know, using, you know, fake shadows. You can use a dodge and the burn tool. You can use the specular stuff. Just to add depth to, you know, future logo designs, future web designs. Cause look, you, you went from this to this. And that's a big, big difference from flat and boring to oh my god <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial i hope you guys learned something and uh if you liked it please leave a like and a comment and you know even if you guys were you know kind enough to subscribe you know i i'd i'd really appreciate that and um you know if you guys want to see more tutorials on this channel let me know you know hit me up in the comment section with some ideas because i i can't read your guys minds you know maybe we'll get to that point someday when We'll have children with gifts. We can read each other's minds. Actually, that that's that wouldn't be a gift. That kid would get the crap beat out of him a lot. Well, this has been Nick for PBE Productions, and I hope to talk to you guys soon.